a while back now I did a buttercup collagraph. It's a three paint collagraph, well, in dry point intaglio on the silver foil card. Um, and I also did a collage of some buttercups at the same time. And I use this technique I have of using all these wallpapers to give you textures. And also all these lovely different papers to give you different sorts of colours. Instead of it being a daub of paint, it's a very different look when you cut these out. So I did some yellow, different yellows, lemon yellow, cadmium yellow, well as many different yellows as you can get and I just smudged it across the paper. And the same with the greens. So I've got some very darks in there and some lights. So there's some more greens. There's another yellow, very pale yellow. For the buttercups, the buttercup shapes, using all the different colours. And what I do is I actually do each individual petal. And look, they just come out as really beautiful little buttercups. And there's... There. And then I use them as a collage. I have glued on my pot from made from wallpaper and my tablecloth made from wallpaper and I'm now going to put in a bit of background. This one is my bluebell one and this one is going to be my buttercup one. All I've done there is mix it a bit of white and a bit of yellow and just giving it a nice background, not worrying about it too much on which to build my buttercups. So I'll take it down to the edge of the tablecloth and to the edge of the to the edge of the pot. I'm keeping this one quite nice and bright and yellow just for fun. So the background's yellow as well, the buttercups will be yellow obviously. And you can see I'm not being very careful. So just get it generally covered. Because you're gonna stick stuff on here and then you'll probably paint it again. You decide what sort of colour you're gonna have the tablecloth. Now you want the lightest colour first. And I've got a really lovely light yellow there and put a lot of water in it. I don't want it quite as bright as there, more like that. There we go. So, I mean, you, again, you can see it doesn't really matter that it's not one tone. I like it when it's got, you know, more than one tone on it. But you can see that the actual patterning on the wallpaper comes out beautifully. I use this a lot. It's really lovely for the inside of um, journals. Okay, so now you've done that. You will also know, of course, that you're going to put some shading on it. I like doing shading that's a particular colour. I mean, in this case, I think green would look beautiful. So I've got a very rich green and I can just pop it on the bottom and look how beautifully it sits. It's as if the actual uh, bunch of flowers were casting a shadow at this point. I'm just letting it do its thing. You don't have to be too descriptive. And I'll already get these really lovely colours coming out. And then I'm going to use this lovely green, which I think is a forest green. And I'm just going to touch over on the wallpaper. And again, I don't want much, because I don't really know what's going to happen with this. I mean, that's lovely for a start. So there we go. There's, you just start yourself off. I mean, already that's a really stunning colour. You probably can't really see that on the video, but that's a really lovely colour. You can start to bring in form if you want to. And you can also bring in shading. That's a brown. I don't really... I think I wanted to... I didn't want to keep these... I didn't want to get this mucky. I wanted it more to be uh, colourful. I don't know what that is. There. But a brown is a beginning. And I might, you see, I put the brown there, I'm going to have to put some underneath there. But already it's come out really lovely. Actually, that brown is nice. Probably blue might be too, a bit too strong. Okay. So that's the buttercup one. So for the leaves, you just basically get a shape. So I can just go like so and then cut it off there. And then onto your shape, you just cut in your forms. Because 
buttercup leaves are slightly sort of the wiggly got sort of a bit of shape to them and they're also quite small and quite fine so you just do the best you can really and you end up with something like that and you can I mean, even just the off cuts that's really nice that's nice and for the actual petals again it's best if you use something that's got sort of a few of the tones in it not just one otherwise you, you know you're not utilizing the idea of it and you just get your lovely little shapes like so and if you need to soften them up and you just get your, your little buttercup petals using all your different lovely tones. I suppose they're very fabric like marks again, aren't they? In any case, you'll see what happens as we go along. So I can bring one back now. And there's your buttercups ready for your composition. And then this is the good fun bit. You just have to start building up your composition, don't you? Get yourself a few longer bits for buttercup stems and start deciding how they go. And it's just really good fun. So. There's some, just some leaves. And if you sort of start just sticking stuff down from the start, you're building up a sort of background of leaves and so on. You sort of very quickly, sort of very quickly become something. It's really nice. I really like it when, when a composition goes beyond the, the area of, that it's confined in. So don't be tempted to put too many of your buttercups on at this point. You know, you want to either just build up a little bit of a background first. And I, I make sure that quite a lot actually comes over the front of it as well. And you, ca you don't have to put it all in with the little thin threads of papers and stuff. You can just do it with paint brushes. See, that would come around like that. Say a leaf comes, so it's already got one leaf. And I'll put another leaf onto it. That's a nice little one, like so. And then on will go a buttercup, but at the right point. And then you've got these really lovely um, marks that it all makes. I just love it. And then you just stick it all down. And they retain this lovely brilliance, don't they? So that's what it'll be like. So I've obviously gone a bit further with this and I've cut loads of the bits out. I've completely destroyed my little composition there. But um, I've sort of got the general gist of what I want to do from it all. And I, want, I have put some buttercups in the background in order to give it some depth, but I don't need too many. And I'm putting the darker colours and the darker stems into the background and then putting the lighter ones in the front to give it a bit of depth to the whole thing, to give it a bit of perspective from the colouring. And especially internally, when it's sort of right in the very depths of it, it's nice to go to put the darker leaves, but you can also put dark shading in at the end. Okay, so I'm going to stick these down and put it on fast forward and you can just see generally how I do it. I'm sorry, but the camera is situated just above my head in this so I'm sorry but my head does get in the way and it affects the focusing of the camera a bit apologies in advance I just wanted to make sure that you could see how the composition develops and how you can test the pieces first you so you can place them first make decisions and then stick them down in this case I'm building up the depths in the center of the pot which would naturally be darker, where all the foliage is dense. I've positioned some of the buttercups behind at this point, but don't be tempted to put your foreground buttercups in until you've really developed the foliage in the background. And you're not really thinking about a realistic representation, you're thinking about a really nice design, something that 
I don't know, has life and exuberance. I like it when they really burst out of the vase that they're in. When you're using this, really make sure you think about the positive and negatives. The spaces you leave in between the forms that you're sticking on are as important as the forms themselves. You can see I've placed the lighter stems in front of the darker ones here, knowing that that's going to go on top and that's going to be the sort of beginnings of where the foreground buttercups are going to be. But I'm still really developing the lovely exuberant shape with the leaves. The leaves are perfect for this because they've got a nice curve and they sort of draw your eyes to the outside of the picture. That was a little bud. Little The little buds are really, really useful. They pinpoint the extremities of the picture. There go. in goes a lighter coloured stem. So I've finished with the backgrounds. Another really good thing is to bring the stems and the foliage and stuff over the front of the vase and it really breaks the division between the two areas of the painting, the buttercup bunch and the vase and the tablecloth below. If you do it all above, you uh, risk making a picture that doesn't join between its top and its bottom, that there is a division simply because of the different subject matter. And now I'm just going to start generally showing you where I put the buttercups. Again, it only helps you in your composition making if you like the composition that I end up with. I wanted to show you just so that I wasn't jumping from the preparation and then simply submitting you with a final picture. It's quite nice to see how the whole thing develops and how I make the decisions. And it might really help you develop your own composition. The other thing you can do is really test the tonality of the picture. So you have got a bright orange on one side, well bring it onto the other and make sure it's nice and balanced. And in this case, on the left-hand buttercup, there's a little light, very lemon-coloured petal. We'll try and make sure you keep that as a sort of general theme that's balanced throughout the whole picture as well. You can also cut out the petals as you go along. So say you need a particular yellow to balance the picture. You just go ahead, choose another yellow. I think in the end, I use some very bright oranges to pull out the buttercups in the foreground. Okay, so you just continue now. You're just putting the buttercups on the foreground of the picture and I will amalgamate them with the leaves going on top of them just so that you don't simply stick them on the top. You're thinking about the colours, like I've just added a, another lemon yellow petal over to that side and you're thinking about how your eye is drawn around the picture. So that little bud at the bottom there takes your eye to the edges of the picture. There's a leaf going across one of the buttercups so that they're not sat on top. And here's some buttercups coming over the edge of the vase again to link the bottom and the top of the picture. Otherwise it would seem like two separate parts. And a little bud goes in there again to take your eye out, just to use the colour really, so your eye is being drawn with the lines and with the colour and the forms. Oh, and this is a really nice little bud. It's not a closed one, it's got three little petals and the green base on it to form it. I use a couple of those. And then you just keep going, you know, adding the buttercups dependent on where you think the composition needs it. So I've sort of kept it bursting out, but also so that your eye travels around it. And again, using the colour to do that too. There I am just cleaning off the glues because as I went on, my hands got dirty and mucky. Um, it's a good thing to go and clean your fingers off all the time there was a little bud that I'd made but the stem wasn't sensitive enough. It's really worth taking your time just to make sure this, everything's sensitive. If you've suddenly bung in something that you can't be bothered to sort of make fine enough, it does show. If everything is nice and fine it keeps the balance of the picture. Here I know that I'm going to be able to put a buttercup 
there but not right on the outside of the image it would look wrong so I've extended your eye out with a leaf and then brought the buttercup just slightly in so it's within the circle of the shape that the composition that I've made again using lemon yellows and the oranges to balance the colours and now another one to bring your eyes over the edge of the vase so that you're not making two separate parts of your picture the top and the bottom and again I think it's here I add another leaf over one of the oh yes no this is where I add leaves just to enhance the composition like it's a bit empty towards the front there so I try the leaves out in various positions and what I want them to do is to add to the all over exuberance of the painting and the design and you get the chance to test it out first which is just lovely I'm just now considering the last few bits that I need to complete the composition I've got loads of petals cut out so I can start to use all the colours nice little bud to take your eye out and then another buttercup to go on top another bud to take your eye out and again if you put the buttercups on the top of other buttercups it's really nice to sort of make it contrast with the others so you'd use richer oranges towards the foreground as opposed to the lighter yellow ones which I used with the buttercups in the background I kept those buttercups fairly light yellow knowing that in the end I was going to brighten the colours towards the front make them richer and of course orange has got the red in it red is something that comes forward isn't it so you're using the colour to make perspective the other thing you'll notice here is that I the um, perspective on the buttercups changes they're not simply the what would you call them but the, the normal way you draw a flower they've been slightly flattened because you're seeing it from a slightly different angle lovely rich oranges to make a foreground buttercup there leaves to take your eye out because as you can see before I've even put that in that that was requiring a shape that went out there or in a bud to take it out further I could sort of telling myself that needs filling and leaves again to take your eye out and here we go with the buttercup I've got to make a decision about where I'm going to put last that was another one like with three petals like a buttercup that's just about to open and then the main dollop of colour is coming within the bunch it's very like arranging flowers isn't it again the colours are richer as you come forward so you can choose the richer, beautiful, intense yellows that are exuding sunshine. And you'll see that some of the foreground leaves are a very rich um, ochre yellow. So again, it brings them for forward and the dark ones in the background give it depth. And then I just put in a couple of the buds just to take your eyes to the edges again. I think this is the last buttercup. I'm going to do one more bit where I just add something in the centre of the buttercups um, but otherwise I hope that you've enjoyed it and I hope you've got something from the video and also I did a bluebell one at the same time so the next video or there will be a bluebell collage video to go with this one. I'll put the link in above if I can if I've already got it or at some point when I do get it because I won't finish that till next week and if you got something from this video please remember to like and subscribe just keep a prompt 
Um, I have in fact got to put in the shading on the vase so I'm going to do that next not the centres and then the centres. So you just get your colours that you're going to put in the base and sadly I had put in some colour in the bottom there's some yellows and greens that I'd already added and it hadn't recorded but you can get the gist of it by watching what I'm doing now and I'm just touching in colour into the vase and into the shading at the bottom uh, the shadows that the bunch of flowers is casting um, I just make it dark underneath the bunch at the top in the vase there's one green and then I add a more forest green and I am really sorry because my head gets in the way and my hair gets in the way I'm gonna have to rethink how I set up my camera but you're just picking out the lovely shapes of the vase uh, just to give it life again um, and the edges of the vase where it might sort of catch the darks or the lights you sort of get used to doing this over a period of time you know you learn what it requires now I put a lovely dark bit down and a dark bit underneath the shading of the vase underneath the shape of the vase and underneath the stand of the vase and it just sort of brings it all out again not very realistic much more design-ish and then you can see how this the lovely wallpaper takes the paint so beautifully I mean it, you almost don't have to do anything it sits in the grooves and it sits on the plastic at this point I just add a bit of darks just to get the shadow of the vase onto the tablecloth um, a bit of dark green and some brown and then last of all I just put some lovely little touches of yellow so once you're completely happy with the base and the shadowing you take a bit of paper that you've painted with some different greens and yellows and oranges and you cut it out and you cut out the centres of the flowers you cut out little circles and then you start to shape them a bit and all you want is sort of spiky type effects and sometimes they're going to be circles and sometimes they're going to be half circles with just the spikes on the top and then I've counted up the number of flowers I need I need 16 of these so they're fiddly I know but the effect is really nice in the end so you then get your picture and start putting these little bits that you've cut out into the flowers and just sort of choose which ones suit which flower and you'll see that some of them are only half circles that's a half circle with spikes on the top and then the bottom one on the right hand side is a half circle with spikes on the top and you just put them upside down or whichever way the flower is facing and here's a close-up to see how it all looks uh, it's just such a nice gentle effect and works much better than if you try and paint it I don't know why it seems to be keeping in with the marks I hope you enjoy. Please remember to like and subscribe. All the very best. Bye.